We cannot allow our senior citizens to have to leave where they've lived their whole life because they can't afford to live here. There's two things that we have to do during this campaign that we have to make people understand during this campaign. Number one, it costs too much to live here. It costs just too much to live here. Am I right? Am I right? So, it does. So one of the things with the resolution is bringing down the cost of shipping. Now, I want you to understand that it's a beginning, it's not an end, but we have to begin somewhere. We have to begin somewhere. So with this resolution, we can get this done. Two years ago, there was a lady from the Department of Commerce here, and when I told her about it, she was absolutely flabbergasted. Well, how can this be? And I'm like, you tell me. <laughs> but they don't know. I don't know why they don't know, but the fact of the matter is that the awareness is a large part of the continuing problems that we have. If we don't, if I don't, if we go to the doctor, okay, how can I help you? You tell me, you're the doctor. Is this really the way that we operate? Should we operate? Because it's really the way that we have been operating. Waiting for someone to swoop down off the cloud and solve our problems, rather than putting in the work. We've so got to put in the work. So we've got to lower the cost of living. Roberto mentioned the energy costs. I, I'm about to get rid of my dog because I know they're running the microwave when I'm not home. <laughs> Fluffy, is a, like Fluffy needs a home. Like that Fluffy needs a home. And while we joke about it, we know that we're living like ghosts in our own home. The light follows us as we go through the house. You leave the room, you turn off the light. Somebody can, somebody can blow up your house and they'll know exactly where you are. Where is he that? He's in the room with the light on. <laughs> that has to come to an end. There's too much that we can do to keep pursuing pipes, pipe dreams. There are federal programs that are available to help us do this. But the thing is that it takes the sort of work that I'm talking about. I've never been scared of work. As a matter of fact, that's pretty much all I know. I am trying to reform myself from that. But if any of us here are thinking about enjoying our later years, keeping our kids here to be raised in this beautiful place, these simple things have to be solved. We cannot continue to pay, to pay the highest rates in the world. Forget the nation, in the world. 58 cents. We, we can't do it. We cannot, I don't care how much money you have, oh, you can't do it. And a surcharge, I mean, we're paying for things that we have to scrap this antiquated system and we have to get the federal government in here to help us. There's something else that we have to do that I know that you want here on St. Croix, because I want it, and we have to have municipal government. We cannot continue with this monolithic structure where one person is in charge of the entire Virgin Islands. I will tell you that people have asked a very pertinent question year in and year out. Why do we have so many plans on the shelf? The reason why we have all these studies and all these plans on the shelves is because there isn't a municipality to carry it through. That's the problem that we have. Every governor walks in and sweeps the slate clean and says, I'm not continuing their programs. Regardless as to the harm that it causes, regardless as to how much money has gone into studying it, regardless as to how much is going to improve our quality of life. We have to make decisions here for here. Let St. Thomas make theirs. I've got no problem with that. But I, we cannot continue letting somebody else dictate how much money we get for the roads, what's going on with our health care, what's going on with our educational system, because what works in St. Thomas will not work here. We are as separate and as different as being on other sides of the moon. It's one Virgin Islands, but it's like Brothers and sisters, there's one that's loud and there's one that's quiet. There's nothing wrong with that, but you have to be able to make your own decisions. And that is one of the points in my platform. We have to be able to municipalize this government so that it works for you. At the end of the day, it's your island. Don't mind those of us who may have a title because we wake up and fall asleep just like you do. We have to start deciding what we're going to live with and what we're not going to live with. Are you ready for that? Yes. Because that's what it's going to come down to. That is something that I am fully prepared to move forward. And I'm not saying that it's going to take a long period of time. 
it shouldn't take a long period of time. We should study it, make up your mind, here are the options, make up your mind and we'll live with what we got. This is what we need to do. On the other hand, the other thing that we need to do is we need to stop having an artificial economy that sends all the money out. There is no way that we are going to move the Virgin Islands forward if we continue to give tax break after tax break after tax break after tax break. Everybody, everybody has to carry this load equally. We cannot do this. This 90% is killing us. You cannot, we cannot continue to say to the working men and women, the people who are business people, we're going to raise your gross receipts 25%. And still expect that our government is going to be solid. How many businesses have closed since that happened? How many are going to continue to close because of that? If we're going to do anything, we have to do, we have to make decisions the same way anyone would make for their family. How is this going to help or hurt our children? Because that's now the viewpoint that we need. Can I continue to take my paycheck and spend it out in the street and then still think my household is going to be straight? Of course not. But isn't that what we're doing? Is that the executive or the legislative responsibility? It's both. I agree. It's absolutely both. So who are you blaming? You know what? I'll tell you what. I don't want to play the blame game because I'm about solutions. What I'm saying is that what we're doing is wrong and it's not working. And we've got to change it so that it works for all of us. Am I right? That, that's, that's where we need to go. We've got to sit around and we've got to look at where we're spending our money, how we're spending our money. I'll give you one example of that in terms of the municipality. We got over $200 million in the Howard funding. 80% was spent in the other district. We're two and a half times longer. So if you do that, then you realize just how so much we do work. We cannot continue to do this. We simply cannot continue to do this. We just can't. We have to sit down and we have to look at the ways that we can use the federal government's resources for the benefit of all. Our children are failing in school. I went to public school. Most of the persons who are doing well went to public school because at that time, at that time, it was something, now I'm not saying anything bad about the private schools, but I'm just saying that the options were there, whether you're gonna send your kid to public school or private school, and you could be assured of them getting a quality education. If we are not going to educate our kids, then what kind of world are we looking at living in afterwards? I'm not comfortable with that. I am just not comfortable with that. And we have to change the way that we do everything. Well, not, let me not say it again. Let me stay and keep being specific about what we're doing. Everybody knows that one of my major um, clients when I was in the Senate was in infrastructure. It's become a national issue. If you look at our roads, you'll understand that you're going to spend a lot of money on your front end. It's just the way it is. Now, what we have to do is not a matter of do we have enough money. Of course we have enough money. But what we need to do is we need to engineer our worlds to work. Because they don't. They only last through one good rain. But we have the resources to say to the Army Corps of Engineers who fixed the problem in Mumbiju. If you remember, Mumbiju used to flood every, every year. People's beds would go down the road. We have to use all the resources. I'm not saying the Virgin Islands has to be treated special. I'm not, Roberto doesn't say that Puerto Rico has to be treated special. What we're looking for is parity and equality. We have to be brought up to the standard of what we're told America is. We work towards that every single every single meeting, in between meetings. And we pay the taxes. And we pay the taxes. You know, when we're talking about the citizenship issue, again, Alice, thank you so much. When we're talking about that, I am not a citizen only when I'm on the mainland. I am a proud American, but I'm an even prouder Virgin Islander. And that's, that's where my priority system works. And what we need is that everything that's available there is available here. Because there's no reason, and I'll tell you something, 
that hit me when I was speaking to the people of Democrats abroad. Do you know that we could move to the DBI and vote for the president? Yes, we could, we could file to run to vote for the president if we move from America to the DBI. You can vote in Tortola, but you can't vote in St. John. And you can throw a stone. It's not a simple thing. We have to become fully vested in the dream that is America. There's no two ways about that. We're not looking to be special. We're looking for parity. And in looking for parity, each and everything that is available must be utilized here. I'm coming back to the Coast Guard not being here. Remember we had a big to-do about the Coast Guard cutter? And where was it? Puerto Rico. It, was Puerto Rico. it was in Puerto Rico. Now, don't look at the friend Roberto like that. It's in his fault. We're the vote, Roberto. It wasn't his fault. Roberto is a good friend to the Virgin Islands. And he, liked, and he liked Stanley in the 10 sleepless nights. But the thing is that the problems that we have, and Roberto, and I'll give you something else that Roberto has spoken about. Roberto and I have spoken about forming a caucus of those of us in the territories because then we have one voice. We get a special vote if we can do this, and we've been, we've been talking about this for quite some time. Now, I'll say one more thing that I think is very important for you to know. Why Democrat? The reason why is really simple, because Democrats get things done for people. And that's very important to me. For each and every one of us, we want to be treated equally, we want to be treated fairly. The democratic philosophy is such that we are not about handouts for uh, Ruben. Ruben, you're too loud. Thank you. The democratic philosophy is that we create opportunities for people to do better. It's really just that simple. We create opportunities for people to help themselves. Some would have you believe that if you help a corporation, that you're helping people. You're not. That's not what we do. We build houses for people. We take care of children. We take care of single parent homes. We build homes for people. That's what we do. We make sure that people are safe in their homes. We make sure that the quality of life that everyone enjoys is something that when you rest your head down at night, you know that you're safe, you're sound, your family's fed, and that when you wake up in the morning, you've got another swinging chance at being successful. And it's really just that simple. We need here in these islands to feel that way because I haven't felt like that for a very long time. I haven't felt that I had a good swinging chance at it for a very long time. Am I alone in that? Am I alone in that? Does everyone feel, and I'm not somebody that I sit around and cry about stuff, but I know when the deck is stacked against me. I know, I know at least that much. And what I'm saying to you is that if we can get together behind this campaign and we can get the things that we need so that when we bring in materials here, that our profit is so small that we can't make a profit, that our margin is that tight. We do business plans every day. And there are more people who cannot go into business because the profit margin is so small. It's so, it's so tight. You can't pay yourself. You're paying your bills. Paying your bills ain't living, ladies and gentlemen. Paying your bills ain't living. It's surviving. It's surviving. And it should, life is about more than that. At the end of the day, what we want to do is we want to live. We want to be able to wake up and be happy and know that we've got a chance of doing whatever we want, we want to do. We want to know that when we have our free time, that you're not trying to bust your hump to find another job because the one you've got can't keep pace. That's not living. That's survival. And we're better than that. And this campaign is about very simple things. It's about driving down the cost of living in the Virgin Islands and be, and be able to have a shot at living. That's what we want to do. At the end of the day, it's just that simple. We want to live, we want to enjoy our islands, and we want to be able to wake up with a feeling of hope and opportunity. We are going to work this campaign through every neighborhood just like we did before.
we're going to wear out some shoe leather. We're going to, we are. We're going to wear out some shoe leather. So bring your comfortable shoes. We're going to knock on every door. And we're going to let people believe in the Virgin Islands again. Because it's not that hard. As a matter of fact, let me change that. It is hard. But it should be. Because anything worth doing is hard. And at the end of the day, when night falls on August 2nd, I will be your nominee. Of that, I have no doubt. And it's not going to be because of me. It's going to be because you believe in the fact that the Virgin Islands can be home again. We're not just going to survive. We're going to live. We're going to thrive. We're going to create, create a place where our children can grow up and live and we can look at them. We can look at them have kids. We look at those little kids play. And we can look at them have fun and then go and dance until their legs hurt and do it again the next day and run around on the beaches just like we used to when we were kids. That's the Virgin Islands that we want back. And every single opportunity, every single resource that the United States government has we're going to use it because we're Americans. And I don't want anybody to, to lose sight of that fact. We're Americans. We fought in every single war. We've been all over this place. And we do it again in a heartbeat if we're asked. Without complaint. Without bitching about what we don't have. Because that's what we do. But now it's time for the hand to come the other way. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to ask for your support. Do I have it? You got it. Thank you all so much.